Uh, Liverpool v. Everybody. Uh, I got my man Gary with me to talk about this game at Selhurst on tomorrow. Um, and Gary, how has your, your international break been? You know what? It's actually been quite good because, um, well, it's been quite good for a few reasons because we're nine points clear. Um, that's one of the reasons. And another reason is that it's, it's just gone quite quick, really. I don't know why. It's just, maybe it's because that C game took so much out of us as a fan base. For me, it's just gone quite quick. I'm just not really sort of taking the brave football. Obviously, don't watch the national football. I haven't even paid attention to it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not really too bothered about that. But no, it's been quite good, man. So get ready now because, what, three games uh, in a week every single time now until, like, January. So it's you know this is where the, 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 fun, the fun period starts for us. This is the time we love, man. We international break doesn't come again until I think March, if I'm not wrong. So uh, yeah. yeah, this is gonna be great. And I, I, you know, unlike the players, maybe and some of the, the the coaches and stuff like that, it's it's gonna be taxing on them just as far as performing and, and having so many games. But as a supporter, this is what you love. You get to watch Liverpool more often than you you do before this period. So yeah, man, excited about it. And um, I guess first we can just get into some of the the players that that may not be. Um, uh, ready to play in this game, and then j- just your thoughts on like um, on on those players, and and if we should we should start them or not. So we'll start with um Salah and, and Robertson. Salah, um, I, obviously he pulled out um, international uh, duty. I think Robertson may have played one game, or maybe he pulled out everything as well. I'm not uh, sure on that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as far as um Salah, I guess the first question is, if you're Klopp. Are yeah. you, do you well? First of all, do you think he'll play? Um, I, I'm I've literally got no clue uh, because obviously he just said that he's going to depend on the final session today. So yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I think he might play. I don't know. I'm, but obviously, Klopp's not one to rush players back if they're not 100 percent fit. He's not that type of manager. Um, so I, you know what? I'm not really sure. It's like 50 50. Like. Uh, I think I think I think he might play. Obviously, as he said, it all depends on how, on how he does today in the final session. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think he will play. I think he'll be okay to play. But we have to be careful because it's not injury where it's like you can sort of run off. It's something that's you know um, happened in October. You know, I mean, early October. And now it's, we're going to December now, so we need to be careful with it. But if he is fine to play and there is improvement on his angle play, if it's not, let him rest and let him maybe even if he misses the Napoli game. Will be it. it doesn't matter. We need them at hundred percent. We can't play in one game and then he gets injured and we have to go miss it for a month or so. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's all for the game. it's all for the good of the player. Forget Palace for the bit. It's all about Salah and it's all about the long term. That you know him being fit for the long term. I think he will play though. I think I do think he'll to play. He's that sort of player. Yeah, if it feels like it, 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 it's a situation where you think, do I, do I risk it here, give him maybe that extra day or two or whatever, and then just have him ready for Napoli. I think both games at this moment are just as important. I say just as important because, look, the league is, yeah. is really important. And every game is a big game. It doesn't matter if we're playing City or Brighton or whoever. And then Napoli, right. we win that game and we're pretty much through. And then we can rest guys for the, for the game against Salzburg. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, obviously, I, I, we say this all the time, but it's true. I, I still feel like, and not just because it's Crystal Palace, but I, I still feel like this team will still be uh, capable of getting points there. And, and the front three will be capable of doing doing well in the day, even without Salah. Um, but Robertson, um, I don't know who's been carrying a knock longer. It seems like Robertson may have, it, it's been, to me, it was a surprise to even hear that he was injured after the City game or that he'd been carrying something after the City game. Um, Salah, there was some talks amongst us and that we thought that people were saying that maybe he's still carrying something. So that was there. But the Robertson thing was a total surprise to me. Um, he's another guy, though, that he's just as important. And, um, you know, you, you feel like, Whatever, if if he's not playing, you know, I watched some of the highlights of that 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 Palace game against us um, last season, and, and Zaha gave Milner a tour of time. I think Milner even got sent off. Um, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, obviously, same situation. If he's not a hundred percent, then you, you you don't really want to rush it. Um, and I think uh, I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see Milner there. Did Did Klopp mention anything about Gomez? Is is Gomez uh, injured or anything like that? Well, no, the only thing mentioned about Gomez was, you know, how he, how he's doing after the surgery. So there's nothing about injury. I mean, yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Van Dijk's 100% fit, but I think, obviously, if Gomez, nothing's talking about Gomez, he, he should be ready for you. Well, obviously, be on the bench, because I think that's where we're going to see Gomez. 
yeah. So hopefully, um, hopefully Robertson obviously ends. I, I look, I love to see both of them, but I, I totally I, I can understand if one or both of them are also rested as well because, um, you know, we just can't afford to have any any knocks right now. The thing that I'm curious about is is some of the guys. Well, I guess the guy that I'm thinking of is, and I guess we can get into Ox and, and Nabby as well. But Shakiri seems to be, uh, you know, smiling and back into and in training again. So I can't expect him to start in this game at all, just because he hasn't played in a while. But do you think this kind of period of of, of games from like here to January, we can expect to see Shakiri um, at some point? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think I think I said on Twitter, I said that you know what, Shakiri, this is probably his last summer as a Liverpool player. Um, mm. his last season as a little player but um, you know I mean if, if he does go I mean he's, he's, he's going to be he's going to have a very successful two years if he win the Premier League and more trophies you know what I mean so uh, but listen I think with Shakir I think he's going to be vital in this Christmas period uh, because we're going to have obviously games in the Club World Cup um, that's the video game I don't think he'll travel I think, I think he'll probably travel to the Club World Cup with you know some of the players uh, in Qatar but I think in games such as um you know, you've got what for the home coming up. Maybe that's the sort of game where we can switch to a 4 2 3 1 and fit in Shakiri. You know, because he is, whatever you think of, it, of him as a player, he has got that creativity. You know, he can pick up that part. He can, he can pick up a ball from the edge of the box and, and, and you know, whip in a great ball or a little dink over the top. You know, he's a very smart player, he's a very clever player. Um, and if we can get, you know, a few more um, appearance, uh, performances like, like we saw in so this period last year as well. Then I think he's going to be a, a big, big boost for us, and I think he's coming up. He's coming back at a perfect time with a lot of games, so he will get some opportunities. Um, but he needs to get in the rhythm. He needs to get minutes. But again, I just think that you know, with Chamberlain coming back, he's ahead of him. I just still think Origi's like because of the rhythm Origi has and because of the minutes he's getting. Origi's uh, thing he's at Origi's at Shakiri. You know, he needs to um, he needs to really train hard. And he, he needs to get back in, in the in the swing of things in training. And show Klopp that he can still be, a, 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 you know, he can play a ma- major part because you have to look at one thing. Dejan Lovren, whatever we think of him, he, he, he's gone from the forgot, forgotten man to being first choice again. You know what I mean? He's, he's, mm. Well, as I said, you know, we know that um, Dejan Lovren, he's, uh, he, he, we, we still think as fans that he's our fourth choice defender, right? Because we think Gomez, Mate, obviously Van Dijk ahead of him. But, you know, Gomez hasn't been doing well. Lovren steps in, you know, and um, he started about four of the last five Premier League games. So, again, as I said, Lovren's, Lovren's uh, proven himself to be a, a part of, um, you know, of the success we have this season. I think that's all you can ask from every single player in this squad. Um, but with Shaqiri, yeah, I, I don't think he'll start this game. Definitely not, because I think Salah will start. If not, then I think Origi will start and Mane will shift over to the right. But he can be a big part for us in the next few um, upcoming games and it's Christmas New Year period. Yeah, I agree. I think um, it, it's, Ox, I think, is a guy that I think a lot of people, well, a lot of people were calling for him to start in the game against City. Um, and we, we saw that worked out, and obviously that, that came to to show that um, Klopp had got it right, and, and the, the midfield were, were the perfect, the guys he, he chose were the, were, the, were the right choice. Um, Ox, for you, obviously, he, he I know you don't pay too much about, too much attention to international football like myself but obviously as football fans we do hear about who scores obviously Gini yeah, gets yeah. a hat trick for, for 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 the Dutch side so um apparently Ox scored at least once maybe more I know he scored at least once and um it's just showing that he he's he's continuing to and, and you know the, the the opponent you play is the opponent you play the fact is Ox is scoring or, or taking his chances when he's when he's getting them whether it be a club or country so yeah, just I guess I, I put it to you that way. Do you, do you see in this game, it's, it's a game for, for, for Ox to come in? I mean, I would, I would I'd probably say yes. Um, because I think, you know, obviously Palace are, they play really, really defensive. Like, when I'm talking about, like, on the counter, yeah, they are dangerous. But they don't go on the counter very often. They don't go on the counter very Listen, Palace are very defensive. And they're going to sit really, really deep. That's what the Palace and Royals, and they always do. And they always used to sell us, or mostly sell us, they used to take it to the 80th minute, you know, win it one, they were drawing, and then they used to lose because they didn't have, you know, they, obviously when you sit so deep, you have to cover up, you have to cover so much ground. Um, chasing, obviously, when you're playing against full backs like Robert Sanders and Arnold in the front of me, chasing, um, you know, dead ball, uh, chasing your second balls and all that. And it ties you out, that's why they're losing so many games, on, you know, in the last 10 minutes or so. And obviously, we're, you know, we're the, king, we're the kings of that. 
winning games in the last 10 minutes. Um, but, yeah, I think Oxford team could start this game. Um, it's like, I don't think he'll start in the midfield. I think if he starts, I think we'll probably see him start instead of Salah. Um, it's like a toss of a coin of him or Rigi. You know, what do you want to do? Um, but as I said, he's not very effective in the wing. So I, I'd really like Oxford team to start in the midfield. And maybe he can start ahead of, ahead of Henderson in that midfield um, and Chamberlain, Fabinho, and Alden. But for me, I, I don't see a place for Chamberlain in this team at the minute. I think, you know, I think you'll probably get it December, January time. But at the minute, you know, I don't see him really. I think, I think he, Chamberlain's getting goals in midfield and he's doing really, really well, right? But after the performance Henderson had against City, it's very hard, and Wijnaldum, it's very hard to, to find a way for Chamberlain. But you look at Chamberlain and think, what, what more can he actually do to get a start in the league? What more can he actually do? You know, and he can't do anything more. But because of the performances uh, from Wijnaldum, obviously Fabinho always starts now, so it doesn't really matter. But because of the performances Wijnaldum and Henderson had against City, you can't, you, you can't drop him. You can't drop him. Um, so for me, Chamberlain takes a, takes, take, takes a seat in the bench. And you know what, Chamberlain is a brilliant superstar to have. You know, so um, even if he's even if he's going forward doing the goal, he can he can obviously um, his shooting is brilliant. Uh, or if we even need to see a game out, we saw him coming against City that fresh legs, uh, that burst of energy. So for me, Chamberlain on the bench, uh, and I think we'll see a similar thing just towards City. I don't think Klopp will. I think Klopp will try to make as least uh, you know as least changes possible. Um, I think that's what you look to do. Yeah, I think so as well. Keep, keep the team tight. Keep the team um, pretty consistent to what it's been. I think if there are changes, obviously they'll be in the in the, the positions that we, we spoke about, Shakiri um, and uh, Robertson. And so Milner and then Origi, I'd imagine, would come in. Um, let's talk about Palace. Go to the Palace side. And, um, you know, these games are always uh, – well, I shouldn't say always, but these games have the tendency to sometimes be um, kind of tight. Um at the same token, I don't really see it as a bogey team like I'm hearing and seeing on social media. What are your thoughts on that? Do you see them as a bogey team? Obviously, we go back to um, uh, what happened in that season uh, where we get the draw there, and, and that pretty much derails the whole season. Um, obviously, I think the last time we lost besides City may have been um, Palace, and then there was that, that game that um, Klopp spoke about in the press conference where he, you know, was irritated about a result we got at Palace. So we've had some games against them that that were tight. Even last season, um, although they scored three goals, they, that their third goal was kind of a, you know, it, it, was, it was towards the end of the game. The game was pretty much wrapped up. But they had the ability to kind of step up against us. Um, so, so just what are your thoughts? Do you, do you see them as a bogey team? Are you concerned about them? Anything like that going to this game? Yeah, I don't think they're a bogey team um, because. They're a tough team to play against, but they're not a bogey team because I think we won our last um, five games away at Sellers Park. You know, I think we have to look at it. Last year we won, what did we win last year? 2-0. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the year before we won 2-1 when Sellers scored that goal. Uh, the other year we won 4-2. Uh, previous year we won, again, Benteke away. Uh, when Benteke scored for, uh, uh, the penalty, uh, we won in the 14-15 FA Cup. You know what I mean? So, it was, so we we won our last five games there at Sellers Park. So I don't really see how it's a bogey team, and this is a completely different Liverpool team. Um, and that's why we've been winning all these games against Palace recently. So, but they do make it tough, and they will make it tough because they, as I said, they're very defensive. But and I don't think it'll be you know a, a battering, but I think we'll win. I think it will be a comfortable performance. I don't think Palace will threaten us too much. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried. I mean, they've got some players, the Hart, you know, IU Townsend. It's a, it's a, it's a good. It's a good attack, but nothing. Nothing really scares me uh, from that team, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think. Um, looks like for me, obviously Zaha has been their their main dude uh, for quite a while now. Seems like forever. It seems like he's been there forever. Um, but even him, he feels like he just doesn't want to be there, and his his performance is, I think, um, suffering for that. Obviously, because he's That's one of the cool. best players, he'll. Say again? He hasn't scored a goal in the Premier League this season. Yeah, they haven't scored many goals, but you would have thought of, of the few that they've sc- scored that he would have scored at least one of them. And he had, that's my point. Like He just hasn't really looked like he is even really bothered. And um, I guess you can't really see Hodgson sitting him down because I guess he's still a threat in his mind. But it doesn't look like he's happy there. And, 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 and for me, 
Spurs, uh, Spurs, uh, Palace have gotten some decent results this season against some decent teams. Um, and they have that ability, uh, say what you want about uh, Hudson, but they have that ability to be really compact. Um, and really, he really sets his team up pretty, pretty good, um, in that, in that way. Um, but, but for me, if, if anyone, you might look at IU, who's, who's again scored on an international break, but I mean, it's IU, and, and although I have much love for him and his brother, he's not really a guy that you really fear. You know, you're not really going up against a, a top notch number nine. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't really see much coming from Palace besides what I said of them, you know, being compact. And that could be frustrating. I, I've seen them do things like that against City and other bigger teams. But as to where maybe a year or two ago, or maybe even three years, um, where we kind of struggled against those teams, try to bait them down, it was frustrating and it was, the game was, was long and we, we couldn't find a way around them. I don't really have that feeling anymore. And even if that is the case, Liverpool tend to find ways more times than not to get out of those situations. So, yeah, I mean, with all due respect to Palace, they just don't – they're not a team that – that's why it's almost laughable to hear the word bogey team with anybody, but let alone Palace, because I think we've just moved as a, as a club past that, that assumption or, or, or that, that negative feeling that should be in our minds of, oh, God, remember what happens at Palace a year or two or whatever ago. We still find ways to do it. And, again, so I say – this 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 mentality isn't really anything new. I know we've just started this season. Or maybe maybe after the Barcelona game, I, I can say, uh, or, or or Everton or whatever, uh, to say this whole mentality Giants thing. But we've shown it in plenty of, of moments in the regular in the Premier League last season, and and this Palace game was one of them. Because Palace, they they squared back. I think uh, they scored one. We scored one. It was kind of going back back and forth for a while, and then finally Liverpool just said, "Look, you know, we we need to just take this game and 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 and, and move on." So. Yeah, I just I, I, I wish there was more I can say about Palace to, to what they can offer, but I I just don't see it, and I just think that this game should be should be pretty pretty um, clean cut. We'll have most of the ball, and I think we can definitely do things with it. The other thing I noticed uh, in the highlights that I saw was, was um, more Fabinho doing that over, kind of over the top. To um, in one case it was Milner or whoever's in that midfield that's that's moving forward, whether it be Milner, Hendo, whoever, uh, maybe even Trent. He's doing that a lot, and I think in, in, in this game we'll need some of that because Palace, like I said, will sit back and probably try to just catch it on the count. I think Hodgson will be happy with um, a low-scoring game. You know, if they get beat, you know, hopefully it's 1-0, 2-0, and, and not 3-4, 5-0. So I think that it'll be more so damage control on his part. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I think our, our, our that, that situation is pretty straightforward. The next couple of games, uh, what do we have? Obviously, Napoli, but, like, in the league, what's is it Brighton next? Yeah, Bayern at home and then Everton at home. Okay, yeah. So I think we, we've started out this season probably as hard as any other team could have as far as the, the matches that we've had. And so right now we just got to really just kind of glide through these games um, and just get the results yeah. when when they come because we've had the harder, situ- the harder matchups already, so that's out of the way. So, I mean, this could get really out of hand as far as um, the the distance we can put um, on City, uh, they're all the teams, but I think the main thing is you know Liverpool City. That's that's still in my mind are the, are the two best teams and the teams that are um, I would imagine that that would be there towards the end. I think Chelsea have a a, ch- a big chance this weekend and Leicester to really really prove that they're really really in the run or at least in that run to be number two. Um, and and just going on that quickly, do do you what, what do you think? What do you see happening in this City and Chelsea game? Do you think City are, are so bruised up from the last game, not physically but just mentally? Um, that they might stumble here? Um, no, nah, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, okay. but I think City will win the game. I just think that they'll have... So I think Etihad will go for it. I don't think Chelsea are the best... Oh, excuse me. I don't think Chelsea are the best uh, defensively at all. Um, I think they can see the few, few too many chances. Um, you know, I think they're still, they're still a work in progress. And I think they'll go for it. They'll cause City problems. But I just think City will be in a sort of, you know, a sort of angry mood where it's like, let's just go for it. Let's just try beat. Let's just try put Chelsea away, because they could obviously when we beat Palace, um, and I'm saying when because we will beat Palace. When we beat Palace, it's going to be twelve points, and they're going to be looking at it and thinking, you know what, twelve points. That's four losses right there, and Liverpool don't. Mm. We're not going to make four losses in the league, so they'll be looking at it with a bit of pressure. Um, but I think CC will win about three one or something like that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, man. Um, I think it'll be a, a pretty. I'm, I'm thinking a draw, and I think that's still a good result for for um, 
for Liverpool, of course, uh, in in the grand scheme of things. But you know, obviously, our our game and our result plays a role. I think. Um, I think it was Half Hope who mentioned something in his preview, and it was, you know, obviously, if if Liverpool uh, aren't able to get max points against Palace, then I think you know Pep doesn't really need to motivate his players in this game. That, that's it's already motivation. Um, if we win it, then I think he's he's got to really get to them because that's twelve points at that point. And 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 at that point, I think it'd be it'd be hard not to say that. It's the that the 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 league is ours at twelve points. That's you know we we'd have to have a serious serious fall um, from from winning ways to 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 drop that. So um, we're looking good though. And like you said, to open up the, the 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 conversation, man, this international break has been so like just soothing because, like you said, we're on top of the league. Feel like we're on top of the world, really. And a lot of times we were so eager, and it felt like the international breaks were long because we maybe we come off of, from a draw or a loss. We were so eager to get back to winning a game or getting a good result or a better performance. So at this point, you know, the fact that we're top of the league and, and sitting pretty is, is really, really nice. The crazy thing is I'm, I'm, I'm curious about is a lot of these games, we'll get into to score predictions and all that in a minute, but a lot of these games I've been saying for the last couple of weeks that hopefully we can, or thinking at least, or hoping at least that we can get a clean sheet. Um, we haven't had many clean sheets this, this season, uh, Gary. Uh, we're still winning games. And I always say, look, if, if, if someone, um, you know, you, you'd rather have the wins than, than really, really be worried about the clean sheets. But because it is an issue, it's a topic, it's something that could cause concern for some supporters. Um, how do you feel about it? The fact that we haven't had many clean like we did last season. Are you, are you that bothered because we are still winning? Or are you thinking, well, at some point we do need to start getting some more clean sheets? And, if, and if, is this a game you think we could get a clean sheet? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I actually predicted two 0 uh, I think I don't think Palace will score this game. I don't think they'll create too many chances. But I think what what what, what the goals we can be. I don't think we we haven't been conceded more than one goal in a game, right? Um, and I think if you look back at it. I'll just go through it. The, the goals we've conceded have been sort of all consolation goals, really. I mean Norwich four 0 up, four one. Southampton Adrian mistake two 0 up, two one. Arsenal were three 0 up. You know they scored maybe three one. Um, where else? Newcastle would actually to lead there, didn't they? Uh, Chelsea two 0 up. They made it two one. So another another sort. It was really, it's not really a consolation goal, but a goal where it's like we're winning. You know, we're comfortably in a, we're winning. Leicester obviously they they um uh who was it? Le- Le- Leicester. What happened with Leicester? Or no, Leicester equalized, didn't they? Leicester equalized. Um, United took the lead. Uh, well, so Villa, Villa took the lead. So recently, it's like we've been going down a bit too. Uh, obviously, City, they got a consolation goal. But recently, apart from the City game, I think our last three games, we've actually gone 1 0 down. You look at United, Villa, and Spurs, and we've turned it around. And it was good to see us going 1 uh, 0 up against City because, as you can see, when you go 1 0 up, you get more space, you get more freedom, um, especially as a team like Guardiola. They're always going to give you space on the counter attack, and that's what we've got. So. It's, it's gonna. We need to get a few more clean sheets because I remember. I mean, December, late December. I think when we beat Wolves away, or I think we, when we beat Newcastle at home. Now it's on Boxing Day. I think we we don't even see the seven Premier League goals, and that was mm. what a record. That was incredible because I think last year defensively, we were unstoppable. I still think that this year we'll, that we are still defensively strong. I think it's just been a few. We we we've, we've sort of lost concentration where we've been two or three new up um, and we've conceded a few too many goals in the last 10 minutes or so um, when teams have maybe been pushing or, you know, a set piece or whatever. So, yeah, I just think that's not really a main worry because it's like we're only conceding one goal per match but it's, it, obviously it would be nice if we can keep it down to zero because obviously a one no win, 2 no, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't, I don't really. I'm not really too worried about that as long as we get the points. Um, and if we don't start concede, if we if we start concede these stupid stupid goals like two or three, uh, stupid numbers like that, then it gets a problem. But at the minute, uh, I'm not really too fussed about it. Um, as you said, the least goals we can see, the better. The more chance we have of winning games. Um, but I think I think we'll get a clean sheet against Palace. I do. I don't. I don't think they'll go for. I think we'll get a clean sheet against Palace. I think we'll get one against Brighton as well in the next game. Uh, I think we, I think we're going to start seeing a, a, a more sort of. Obviously, we, our concentration has been brilliant this season. Our desire has been brilliant, but I think we're going to start seeing a more focused Liverpool because we know this team can hit uh, another level. Uh, there's more levels to hit with this team because we know the, the 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 quality these players have mentally and obviously you know with their skill set. So yeah, um, 
as I said, it's a, it's a big period for us. And before we head into Qatar, we've got five league games. If we win those five, as I said, wrap the title up and send it to Liverpool before Christmas because City are getting close. We've got uh, Palace away, have to win that. Brighton at home, Everton at home. Couple home wins there. Uh, Bournemouth away, we normally smash them away. Uh, and Watford at home. So five wins there. We go to Qatar, lift up the Club World Cup and we come back to Leicester away. You know what I mean? So, and I think then we could be 12 or 13 points clear. So next five games, if we win them, then I think you can say we've definitely won the league title because I think City will drop points if you look at their game. So it's a big, big next next four or five years a little more massive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with all of that. And um, as nice as it would be to get a clean sheet, if we keep racking up wins, I don't care if we break the record for most goals conceded, obviously that won't happen. But if we're winning these games, staying undefeated, I, I really couldn't care less. The only thing I would say is I know this, what this defense is capable of, and when we don't get it, I I just more so just – because I know they all want it. And when we do concede it, you can see the responses, and they, they're just kind of disgusted with themselves. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, obviously as a, as a supporter, you, knowing that your team can get clean sheets – um, I, I think it would be nice to, to see more of that, but I'm not really too bothered. Um, score prediction from you, man. Uh, 2-0. I'm going to 2-0. Oh, yeah, you said that. Marley. You said that. Okay. M- Marley just scored. Man- uh, Marley. Mm-hmm. And, and, well, if Salah plays, maybe he'll get a goal, but mm-hmm. you know what? I'm going, I'm going for a Marley brace. Marley brace. Okay. Goal, so Marley, but you know what? I've got to tell you, Firmino hasn't scored a goal since Chelsea in I September. I know. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's kind of been under the radar. But yeah. It's like, it's kind of like, and I've got, I've completely, I was looking back at him, uh, at his stats and stuff. So, wow, it's, it's, it's a long time. He hasn't um, scored since Chelsea, uh, which is crazy. But obviously, we know Firmino does a lot more than just score goals. So I think that's what we sort of appreciate with Firmino. But it'd be nice if you, you know, get a goal in the Palace game. And maybe he can. Uh, but I'm going to go 2-0 Mane with a couple goals. Yeah, real quick. I was I told you I was watching that Palace game back. I also watched the Leicester game. Yeah. And um, obviously we won the, the Palace game. But remember that time? I, can't, I, still can't, I still can't believe that handball wasn't called. Do you remember the Towson, uh, Andrews Towson handball on the box? Is that? Do you remember that or no? Which one? Which game was it? Uh, this is the Palace game at Anfield. Andrews Towson clearly, like, literally volleys the ball. I'm just like he's playing volleyball. With the ball in the box, it could have, should have been a penalty. Do you remember that? Was that in the four three game last season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay I remember. That, that. was yeah. crazy, man. And and I think the yeah. I want to say the ref that day was um oh shit, what's the guy nobody John, likes? It, it, it was John Moss. It was John Moss. It was John Moss. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I'm like, bro, that's so blatant. Uh. Yeah, and then the one that killed me yeah. was was the penalty or should have been a penalty to Nabby against Leicester. I mean, clear. Oh. Clear penalty. Uh, Martin Atkinson. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I'm, I don't want to be petty, but you look at those things and you think, you know, obviously we lost it by one point. I mean, it's, it's so many other things you could bring up too that Liverpool yeah. did wrong or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you, you can sort of like look at you, you look at anything in the West Ham game. Milner was offside. You know what I mean? So right, that's true. That's true. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. That. I mean, that, do, you remember the, do you remember the Cater uh, penalty against Southampton away? I don't know if you remember it, where he got cleanly taken out um, in the Southampton game. Uh, we well, then, that was play. twice then, because he, he got the same, the same thing happened at Leicester. Yeah. So that must have been twice. Yeah. Yeah. It was a clear penalty, and we were 1-1. I think it was the last 10 or 15 minutes. And we could have won yeah. that game 2-1. Yeah. Look at you think. Jesus you look Christ, at you. man. We finished the league on 98 points, and we win the... Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yes, you know... Where it's fine it's, margins, man. Fine margins. Yeah. That's how we... But... Really um, yeah, I I think with this game, um, yeah, I think I think two nil is probably so. Again, I I, th- I just think Liverpool. We get the goals early. Hopefully, that's what we do. I think Klopp is more than happy to just be like, all right, fine. Let's just let's just uh, you know just trying mm-hmm. to get any go- concede any goals and then just get out of here into the next game because there's so many games coming up, man. And so many, if the guys so don't many. have to. Yeah, if they don't have to give all so much more energy than they need to, then I think it's best to just take things easy. So I do hope we get a, a, a quick start against Palace. You never know yes. about Palace again because these games are, are kind of tricky. But yeah. I just think Liverpool are at a different level now, and Palace are, wow, totally at, at the other end of, of, that, of those levels. Uh, before we get off here, man, I just want to ask your opinion on um, Jose Mourinho. When you were, first of all, were you shocked by Pochettino getting sacked? And then... Um, were you were you shocked to see that that quickly 
not only did they have a manager lined up, but it was Josie Mourinho. You know what? I mean, listen, before, like, I tell you if I was shocked or not, I actually said, right, in, when was it? I think it was about, when, obviously, Spurs have, they've had a poor start to the season, right? Um, right. And, and they've been poor, I think they're 14th in the league or something like that. And I said that Pochettino, mm-hmm. he probably has to go because the players, the players, um, there's a lot of players there that they've got like one year left or six months left, something like that. So their players, their contracts are running out. It, it sort of looked like, I think Pochettino didn't help himself with the comments before the Champions League final where he said, um, yeah. you know, if I yeah. go in the final, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. Because what, what do the sort of players make of that? You know what I mean? It's like, you win and you just, you just, you know, you just piss up basically. You, you just jog onto somewhere else. But because you lost, you're going to stay on. You So it's like, it, it, I think Pochettino should have should have left. I think what he done at uh, Tottenham was, even though he got zero trophies, I think we know that that's a, that's the sort of level, um, the maximum level he could have taken that team to. Um, uh, and I think that with Pochettino, he done a brilliant job because he took t- Tottenham from nobodies to consistently t- um, being in the top four, Champions League final, you know, and yes, he didn't have that extra step to take them to the um, to a trophy, but at the same time, as I said, Tottenham, there were nobodies before he came, and now he's taking them to, as I said, Champions League football, Champions League final. You know, they should be grateful for that. But Mourinho, I don't know. I wasn't really. I was obviously you're shocked when you see something like that, uh, and I, I was, I, and I was a bit shocked when I saw oh, um, Pochettino's being sad because I didn't really expect it. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, First of all, I said Mourinho is going to be the manager. I said it before Pochettino was sacked. I said mm-hmm. that. Uh, I said it a couple of months ago. I said I said in October that Mourinho is waiting for a job. And when I said when I heard that Sky Sports said that he's waiting for a job in England, he's rejected Leon, he's rejected Benfica, he's rejected uh, the likes of teams in China, you know. And I said that the jobs that he's going to be looking, at, I don't think he'll go to Arsenal. I said the jobs he's, he's probably going to get are Everton, maybe. Um, because Everton do like to spend a bit of money, Everton, don't they? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. First, um, but then I was like, you know, how is Daniel Levy and Daniel Levy and Mourinho going to get along? That's well, that's my thing. That's what I'm surprised about. So he must be see, and that's I'll let you finish. Go ahead. No, you can go on. I'll finish off. Anyway. Yeah, I, that's that's where I'm surprised at. Now I wasn't too sure because I think, uh, I mean, I think Tottenham, as far as their squad and Arsenal squad, they're probably slightly better than than uh, uh, Spurs are probably slightly better than Arsenal. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe even more than slightly because their defense comparable. You can't even compare the defenses. But um, I wasn't surprised with the the Pochettino thing, and I echo everything you said. And sometimes I know I tease Pochettino and say that he's the Argentine Marco Silva, but the the real thing is that he is a good manager. I'm not going to say great; he's a good manager, and yeah. Although he didn't win trophies, which you have to mention, um, he he's done the best with Spurs than any, any manager I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, getting him to a Champions League final in itself, uh, I know it sounds crazy, but that that's a pretty tall feat for that club. Um, mm, yeah. and, I, and and I think if Pochettino would have, this is where he, this is this is where I, I I have troubles with him. I know Harry Kane is your dude. He's the great white height for that team. He's a big guy for England. All that. I just think you got to start who got you there. And the fact that Lucas Moore was nowhere to be seen in that starting 11, I think we still would have beaten them. But I just think you have him and Son, that would have given you much more of a threat. Um, 100%. Than, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's situations like that in big games that Pochettino just hasn't really. And I think people said that for about Klopp for a while, but Klopp's shown that he can he can do that in big games. So I wish Pochettino all the best. I just think the whole idea that people are like, oh, that's terrible that they did that. It's not terrible because he taken you as far as he could go. And like you said, he probably should have left in the summertime after he said what he said, or the club should have got rid of him. But they stayed with him. The results weren't weren't good. You can tell he's he's, he's lost a locker room. That's so obvious. Um, I would say it's more of a shock because I just didn't see it coming in the in um in an international break like that. Um, yeah. But 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 the, the fact that they let him go, it was almost like okay, well, that, it's about time. From 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 as a supporter of Liverpool, just on the outside looking in. As far as Jose Mourinho, he's my goat. I mean, I love Jose, so I'm happy to see him back. I'm to go back to what you you, you said at the, towards the end before I cut you off. I think Daniel Daniel Levy has, is showing that either he didn't trust Pochettino with that money, or like I don't because how all of a sudden are you willing to give your manager? Because you know Josie's going to need money. We, we know that. I mean, he's not going to. He, maybe he's changed a little bit. He hasn't changed in that way. I don't think. 
And then again, yeah. maybe he thinks this team is good enough. I don't know. But I can't see Levy giving him as much money as the club. So, I don't know. What, what do you think on that? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know what? I was looking at it. I was thinking, Pochettino. I was looking at his transfers. I was thinking, has Pochettino really bought well, if you look back at his time at Tottenham? And I was looking, I was thinking, you know what? He's you look at the players now, um, the other club. Lloris was still there where he, was, where he came. Walker was still there where he came. Uh, he bought Trippier. No, no, yeah, so he bought Trippier. He left. Uh, Vertonghen was still there. He bought Adevaro, right? He bought Devin Sanchez. Mm, not great. Not, not, not a great player. Rose, um, he, was, he was still there. Yeah, ben Davis, there. average left back, Ben Davis. Nothing great, really, is he? Backup left back. Um, so, so, look so, so, so. Sissoko, he's obviously become a, a key part in their play in their yeah. team, but again, nothing, nothing special. Um, in Dombele. in Dombele, again, he hasn't really had a lot of time, but he hasn't really started the best um, as yeah. well as, as. But he still needs time, of course. But he hasn't had the best of starts. Uh, mm-hmm. Harry Rings, he's brought through, um, and you look at the attack now. Young was on probably been their best signing. You know, Delhi Ali again started off well, now gone very inconsistent. Lamella again, nothing, nothing special. And Lucas Moore. So it's not been he's not he's not taking players, right? He's not um, really bought players and taken taken them to a world class level. Not many, there's not many mm, in the I see what you mean. Yeah. In fact, you know, they're, they're, they're good players, but they're not mm. that players to take the next step like Mane. And this is where coaching comes into it. Mane was a good player at Southampton, but now he's gone up to a world class level. Salah yep. was a good player at Roma, now he's gone up to a world class level. Firmino's a good uh, obviously Firmino he he um or he, he took him for me, you know, but he was a good player, took him to a world class level. Winaldum, again, good player, taking him wouldn't say world class, but taking I mean let's be oh, let's I, be real. I mean, most of the players besides Hendo, no disrespect to him or, or Milner, most of these yeah. players on Liverpool's team, which is crazy, you can look at it as being world class players. I mean, I, that's the same to say, but when you really look yeah. at it, all of our players, that- bar those two. You can easily put them in the conversation, at least. I mean, that's incredible, man. That that just doesn't. That this what I mean, and it is incredible. And this is where this is where coaching sort of comes into it, and this is where you know what I mean that that sort of difference between Pochettino and Klopp comes into it. We got a good yeah. manager, got a world class manager, and it's mm-hmm. not world class. World class is also about these managers like Pep or Klopp. It's it's about their coaching. This is why. Listen, we can all we know about Pep how much the amount of money he spends in his career. But the thing with Pep is again, Pep's coaching De Bruyne. He's gone from a he went from a very good player to a world class player. I think even David Silva's improved uh, in, in in terms of his game. Um, Aguero, you know, what I mean, Sterling. He does improve players. You know, he improves players. Pep, whatever he, the amount of money he spends for his coaching, he improves players. And I think we put. That's a good point. That's a good point. He did, he didn't improve enough. He didn't. He didn't really take players at world class level. Maybe Son, exception, and Alderweireld did quite well in the game, but nothing really major. Obviously, Harry Kane again. That's a brilliant. That's a brilliant um, sort of example. He's done well, but again, as you said, in the Champions League final, Lucas Moura took you to that Champions League final with three goals from his left foot, from his weaker foot in that second and you, half. I right? mean, that, that that has to be his worst decision as a manager. I'm sorry. Like you, how do you not start this dude in the final? Cannot start. Kane, because Harry Kane got pocketed away at, uh, away at Anfield in that season and I hope I went and that won't be by Van Dijk and Gomez. And he was awful Matthew. in the final. He was awful in the final, but he was hurt apparently. So it's like, I don't, that was just, let me ask you a question real quick. Where, where did Son come from? The German league? Yeah, he came from Bayer Leverkusen. Now, what was his numbers like comparably? Was, were they close? Were they not as good? I mean, because I feel like, and I'm not trying to knock Pochettino because maybe he did improve him, but I'm wondering if it's just Playing in, in England, I wonder if, if him playing in England just brought more attention to him. Because was he getting numbers at Bayern Leverkusen? He was. He was getting a lot. Of, he was getting the same exact numbers at Bayern Leverkusen as he was. Okay, getting so yeah, that, then I, I can't give that to Poch. I'm sorry, I can't give that to Poch. Yeah, he that's can't just really me. Was. I can't really. And I, think, I, I think I I knew this actually because I've checked it before. But let me just actually there you go. And I'll show you now because I got it up and I'm, I I think I'm right. If you look at it. In the in the eleven in the he was at Hamburger SV right in the twelve thirteen mm-hmm. season he scored twelve league goals in the thirteen mm-hmm. fourteen he goes to Bayer Leverkusen scores ten league goals fourteen fifteen season scores eleven league goals for Bayer Leverkusen then he goes his first season is twenty fifteen sixteen we're just talking about the league here forget Champions League and all that stuff mm-hmm. right 
at the, look at it, 15, 16, 15, 16, so he's averaged about 10, 11, 12 goals a season. He goes to Spurs, first season, he scores four league goals in his first season. Then he scores 14 league goals. Then he scores 12. Then he scores 12. And now he's got three. So there's not, as I'm saying, they're not 19. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Let's see, that's, that, 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 that's already a good player in there. And I think the yeah. fact, well, I know that obviously the fact that he's playing in the Premier League it's naturally going to just give him more attention because he's in the English English league, you know, and, and I don't know how often he was playing in the Champions League with those German teams, but, you know, the this, this Spurs are, they play in England, and so you're going to get more of that around, especially when he's doing stuff and, and, he, and Kane isn't the only guy that's, you know, when he comes in, that's going to bring some notice to you because it, most people are thinking, oh, this is Kane's team. He's the most, he's the best attacking player. Then you get this guy, Son, coming out, almost kind of, quote, unquote, out of nowhere. And so now, so I, I, I can't give that to Poach. Sorry, I can't. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a fair and point. I'd be, and, and I'd be hard, I'd be hard pressed to find. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine off the top of my head right now any one player that he's really improved. I mean, obviously, he's proved he's improved that club. That's, that's, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. But as far as just man management, like, has he really just improved any one player? I, I can't see it. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I that's mean, just me. I mean, Maybe that's Harry. Maybe Harry Kane's maybe one. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and like, that's fair. look at Harry Kane. You know, he, he's brought him to a very good level for um, you know scoring 30, 30 goals a season, twenty goals, twenty five goals a season. Mm-hmm. So that's that. That's that. You have to give him that. I mean, I, I, I think Ali, the fact that he, that he brought Winks up is is good too. Give him yeah, that. Well, he brought yeah. in Ali, he was scoring you know eighteen goals a season, ten goals a season, but now he's gone back to five goals a season. I mean, now, see, so- that, now, now, see, that's the interesting thing, because when he first came on the scene from MK Dons, I'm thinking, OK, this dude is going to be pretty good in this league. And damn, why couldn't we get him? Now, I don't know what's happened to, to Dele Alli lately, because, you know, all of a sudden just become a bad player. There's still a good player in there. So I'm just wondering, I what is it with happen- him? Yeah. Because Mar- J- Jose's not going to go for that. If you're not going to put, put forth more effort than that, you're not going to play for Jose. So- Definitely not. What, what's happened is with Ali is I think... If you look at when he first came in, he was playing sort of as a, um, as a second striker to Harry Kane, getting in the box, getting goals. What's happened is now he's sort of, uh, you look at the reality, he's sort of getting into these sort of deeper positions, sort of, you know, as a left-sided uh, player in midfield. You know, he's not that player. He's never been that sort of player, Dele Alli, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't, I don't think, you know, he's, he can pick out a pass or he can, you know, get, get, get that killer pass. He's not that sort of player. He's a player mm-hmm. where, He's a getting in the box player, get goals, sort of, as I said, a second strike Harry Kane. That's why, if you look back back at his goals from the 15, 16, and 16, 17 season, where he scored 10 league goals and 18, that's where he was getting, that's where, obviously, he's had a few injuries recently and it maybe can give that to him. But again, his performances haven't been, you know, at that level. It's sort of the, the hunger. It doesn't look, it doesn't look there, you know, that hunger you used to have with pressing and, you know, that dirtiness. Remember, we used to get red cards and get into little struggles. Yeah. yeah. I don't see that anymore. Um, and, you know, and and I do like that that sort of thing because it shows that a player he cares. You know, it shows that a player is hungry to fight with Costa. From mm-hmm. the day of Costa, you know, fighting, gaining. I love that sort of thing. You know, it shows yeah. the passion of it shows the fight of the player. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I don't know what's happened with Ali. Um, you know, he just doesn't look at anyone. He's had a few injuries, but again, I don't. I, I don't really, he probably he would have been Liverpool player by now, and I would have been in, amazed to see how he would have, because obviously Liverpool wanted him, didn't they? And they actually spoke to him, and they, and 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 Brendan Rodgers in the eye went to him, and, but they mocked, they mocked it, and they said five thousand pound a week with wages, right? And he went to Spurs, and then that was the end of that. And I think it would have been amazing to see how he would have developed on the clock, amazing. Um, and I think he would have been. A much better player, a much much better player, because that's what club does with players. He takes them in and he makes them better players. Um, you know, even if you're not, even if you're a bench player, you know, he gives you that belief, he gives you that 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 passion. I remember, I think who was it that said something about Javier Hernandez and Salas Ferguson? I think it was Rio. I think yeah, it was Rio. He said what he used to say with Javier Hernandez was as a bench player, he said, right, you're not going to play for the next three games, but you're going to play in the, for example, just say the Brighton game, and you're going to score. And he, and he used to score in the, in the game that Fergie used to tell him to. This it's all about men, um, you know, the, the 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 mental aspect that that players give to you, that the manager gives to you. Um, you know, you know how to treat players. You know, like Klopp, he knows how to treat Divock Origi. You know, he knows mm. how to treat mm. you know, players, young players like Rio Brewster. He knows how to treat them. Otherwise, Origi would have left. He would have left all the Champions League oh, final. Yeah. Yep. 
you know what I mean? This is it's a manager. The way the way he treats you, um, the, the plans he has for you because he makes plans individually for every player going forward as well, not just a team. So yeah, I mean, this is why all these players are coming into the club. I mean, Fabinho is getting a new contract. You know, what I mean, I think this is why, and and everyone's signing, everyone's signing their their, their long term deals for the club, um, because the future is bright. And as I said, with with, with Pochettino, as you said, the one of the worst decisions he made in the Champions League final was starting Harry Kane because he did absolutely nothing, didn't touch the ball. Lucas Moura, whatever you think of him as a player who who rather have that team, he was on fire at that point, his confidence was up, and you play him up front, and we would have still won that final, but you would have given more problems. More problems mm-hmm. of Van Dijk, more problems of Matip, running in behind uh, with Son, running in behind with the likes of, um, you know, Ali, Ericsson. You know, because mm-hmm. Spurs have a good team. And Lucas would have given them more going forward, especially runs in the box, put uh, stretching defensives. Um, and Harry Kane was just awful in that game; was was absolutely horrendous. But I mean, Jose's here. I mean, just talk about Jose because I wasn't surprised. I said that when he, when when Pochettino got sacked, I wasn't really surprised that Mourinho was the manager. I think it shows the sign of desperation um, because uh, Mourinho five years ago, I don't think he would have taken his Tottenham job, um, even if they were this sort of the team that they have now. Because you look at the club name, Manchester United is a big club. Obviously, Chelsea's worked in Real Madrid. It shows that Mourinho now, you know, the, the Tottenham's as good as he's going to get. Tottenham is as good as he's going to get right now, um, and he's very lucky because Tottenham is still a very good club. There's the stat, there's the stadium, the players, the facilities. Look at the training ground, absolutely brilliant. Talking about young players, listen, he's not going to play young players. I think we know that he's not going to play young players. He, 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 I mean, he's inherited a very good team here with the likes of Eric Dyer. He loves the, you know, Eric Dyer. Remember, he wanted to sign him for Manchester United with Matic. Never got him, but he's got him here. You know, he's you're gonna, we're probably going to see a lot more of Eric Dyer. Uh, but listen, I think he said that we're not going to win the title this year, but he said we can win it next year. So we're not going to win it next year, but we can win it next year, which is nonsense. He's not going to win the title at Spurs. Um, you know, it's more likely he wins the Champions League this season than wins the title next season. You know what I mean? The Premier League title next season. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, because that's, that's a competition. It's not going to happen in the Premier League. The Premier League is Liverpool's going to win the Premier League again next season, especially if Pep Guardiola leaves. You know what I mean? Liverpool will dominate the Premier League for the next few seasons. I can guarantee that for sure, especially when Pep leaves, because I think he's going to leave before four o'clock, right? So I think, I think Liverpool win a lot of titles. Um, but with Mourinho, I think the Max will get them. I think if they don't finish top four this season, which it could happen, it could still happen if they go on the little run. If they don't finish top four this season, he'll probably win them the Europa League next year and he'll get them top four and maybe they're all the FA Cup or League Cup. That's it. There, there won't be any more to that and maybe you'll get them third or fourth. That's it. There's not going to be title or Champions League. I, I can't see it. I really can't see it. Yeah, I, I do think, uh, Jose, because again, we've said it before and obviously they, they've down to the at Tottenham. I mean, it's just not a, a bum team. You know, they, they're not a 14th place team. So they do have a... a a framework there that that can that can be successful. They don't just again. You, you can't go from Champions League final to just not being good. It, it just doesn't work that way. So I do think with Jose there, well, number one, I think he'll definitely get a trophy there. I don't know what it'll be. Uh, it, like I agree with you, it probably won't be a Champions League. Although I, I wouldn't put it past Jose to take that team on a nice run in Champions League, not to win it, but to go on a run. I think he can win a League Cup. I I, th- I do think him being back in the Champions League. Un, uh, managing any team, let alone a, a, a decent to good team like like Tottenham, I do think he'll make it difficult. It's just that one other team that we may have to worry about. But yeah, I can't really see him just usurping Liverpool uh, or, or even City, really, unless Pep leaves to win it. But um, I, I do think Spurs will be... I, I think he can have Spurs playing um, better than, than Pochettino. Might be slightly better, but I do think he, he can go a, a level up. The thing with, 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 with him is that I think it's a five-year deal. Um, his 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 business model has been to again. How many years is his contract? By the way, I, I'm not too sure. How I thought it was. I thought I thought, it was, I thought it was 15 mil over four years. I could be wrong. Four. Okay, cool. Uh, it's three or four, but um, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. probably won't last to that last one, and then he'll just get paid out. That's what he usually does. But I think with him, it'll be interesting to see because he talked a lot of game about the whole youth, which I thought was a joke for him to even bring up. But again, maybe he's turned over a new leaf. I don't know. But I, it'll be interesting just to see when the problems start to come, because they are going to come, and it'll be interesting to see how he handles those, whatever those mm-hmm. may be. So I wish him the best because he is my favorite manager, and I do. I just hope that he can get those guys to to, to work for him. Um, obviously, I don't want them to do better than us, so I'll leave it at, at that. But I, I do I do, um, I do, do think he'll he'll have them playing some decent ball. Yeah. But back to the, the, the Dele Ali thing, 
Uh -huh. should be one of the players that we're talking about when we talk about players we would take from Spurs. Son, for sure. But Dele Alli at one point was one of those guys that I was thinking, i take this dude. And that is so Real far from my, my mind now. Real Madrid and Barcelona as well. And that's crazy even to think because he hasn't given any of that off to me. Then again, I mean, look at those teams now, and I know they have big names, but I, I, I don't know why too many players want to go there now. I mean, neither one of those teams are really showing to me that they're 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 worthy of of winning anything big. I mean, maybe they're 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 um their leagues, but I, I don't really see any of those teams really really doing much in the Champions League, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, they, it's Barca and it's Real Madrid, so you can imagine. Young guys who probably wanted to play in Spain for for since they were young, maybe they would go. But but um, yeah, man, I I think it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do. But yeah, I just think I'm, I'm excited for this weekend, um, our game. I'm, I'm trying to be excited about the, the City Chelsea game. Um, but part of part of me does feel like City will just batter them, um, just because they they need to. Uh, well, they need to win. I don't know they need to batter them, but I, I just think that That's the good. anger that they felt, the anger they yeah. felt from last game. Uh huh. It's like they need to, isn't it? Yeah, especially Sterling, and I, I, I think what is big a big loss for them, um, besides the loss they already have, is Bernardo Silva. I think them not having Bernardo yeah. Silva, um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big loss for them. So I don't know. We'll it see. I, I, it'll be a real test for, to, for for. We know what City can do, but I think if Chelsea can beat this team, wow. I mean, because this Chelsea team have been pretty impressive, um, not necessarily yeah. defensively, although they have some some good young kids, but I mean. They've been looking pretty good under Lampard, man. So, I don't know. We'll see. I still think it'll be a draw, though. It was a weird one because with Lampard, right? Um, you know, with Lampard, it was like, when I first saw him against United, I was like, you know what? Even in just 4-0, they showed some very good signs. They showed yep. good signs. A lot of people they don't showed, say that. That's true. It's true. They showed, they showed good signs against us in the Super Cup. And I was like, they lost two games there, but it doesn't really matter. What I'm seeing from Frank Lampard there is a team that that is playing good football, that presses well. Uh, that keeps possession well, and that will be a very good team in the future. And with Frank, Frank Lampard, they are uh, wow, really, really good. What I'm seeing from from um, from him, um, and it, it, and it, it, it obviously all points to. I've seen a lot of people recently saying, "No, this is why Gerald will work. This is why you know." But I said, they're not, it's not just because they're English midfielders, and they, you know, they just because they're they're both English midfielders that play for their former clubs doesn't mean that one will work and the other. Work as well, you know what I mean? It's all it depends mm -hmm. on their strategy and everything. But as, as I said, with Steven Gerrard right now, I think he will be the next Liverpool manager, in my opinion. I mean, take mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah. This is just my opinion, like what I think will happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and I think he will be the next Liverpool manager. Uh, and I, I was, I, I've been watching a lot of Rages recently, and as I said, he, he's done a fantastic job, you know. As I said, he took a, he took um. The last time we spoke about him, he sort of took a point away at, at Porto. He went and beat them 2 0 at home again um, in the Europa League, beating Porto. Yeah, I saw away. that. That's a big, that's so, a big result. And he's he's done really well. I'm not too sure where they are currently in the uh, in the Europa League um, uh, because I think they've be, they've actually done quite well. Let me actually give it a quick check. So they're they're second in the group with two games to go. You know, mm. Young Boys got seven points, Rangers got seven points, Finals got four, and Porto's got four. So that's a tough group there. Um, you know, I think in the league, I'm not too sure where he's in the league. He's, I think he's in the final again. He's in the final of the league up against um, Celtic. He's actually top of the league. On uh, well, he's actually one goal off. Twelve games played, thirty-one points, same as Celtic. Seven conceded, thirty-five scored. It, mm. We know the Scottish league, but I think what he's done is he's taken Rangers to the next level, competing back to Celtic, competing with Celtic again. And as I said, it's going to be interesting to see how he develops because I don't, I want Gerald to leave Celt uh, Rangers after this year. And I want him to go to somewhere else, a, a sort of step up. If he's going to be the next level manager, I want him to take a little step up. Um, whether it's a Premier League club or something, I want him to take that step up um, to see what he's about. But Because I do think he'll be the next level manager. Klopp said that he thinks Gerald's going to be the next level manager, I think he said a few months ago. So it's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? That he's, I mean, what, what are your thoughts now? Because I actually wanted to ask you, do you think he's going to be our next manager? No, no, I think we spoke about it. Now, and I, I think, I, well, I can see him being it. So yeah. what I think and, and what I would like are two different things, obviously. What I think is that um, there's a possibility that he could be. Um, it's hard to really say because for me, I just feel I still I feel like it's it got to be between him and Pep Lenders. If Pep Lenders goes, which is there's a chance for him to get a job somewhere too, maybe Dutch league or wherever, um, he, then he, then maybe. Yeah, he has a job. 
Pep Lin has actually had a job, didn't he? And he got sacked after a few months. Um, right, right, right. I don't Liverpool. know where that was, but yeah. It was like, I think it was Isla Holland. So he got a job, I think he got, oh, okay. he got sacked or the, the left again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, and, and look, I don't know how much he, how good he would be as a, as a manager, but I just like the way um, he comes off in press conferences. I think he, they had him for the uh, pre-match of the Arsenal game. Yeah, and a lot of things he was saying, man, it was just it, it was pretty much on the one, and, and it would be right because he coaches with with Klopp, but it, it sounded like we were listening to Klopp, just like maybe a younger version. So, um, which doesn't mean a whole lot. You can't really, you don't really know if that's going to translate to the pitch and if he's going to be a winning manager at Liverpool. But look, I think if it's him, if it's Gerard, I'd be happy. Um, I'd be happy with with a, a, a few guys if it's the right fit, and that's what it comes down to. Obviously, Gerard, you would imagine he would be. I mean, he is from Liverpool. He, he played for Liverpool, so I wouldn't be mad with that. But like you say, because what? Because because I, I looked at that the other day too, and I saw that and I was thinking, wow, Gerard's really got his team beating teams yeah, like yeah. Porto in the in the in the, in the Europa League. Yeah. that's nothing. That's nothing to sneeze at. So, um, that that's I mean that's something you got to be proud about. So look, if he if he gets one more gig after this and he does well somewhere, really really challenging himself. Look, I think starting with Rangers is a good start. You know, what I mean, I, it's it's a league that's not that uh, competitive like like other leagues, but it's a good place to start. You know, what I mean, because it's out of your comfort zone, you're not familiar with it. But if you can go to another league that's maybe just a slightly a bit a bit above that and do well, then I'm like, okay, cool, let's go, let's do it. But I wouldn't take him right now. Like if we didn't no. have club, I wouldn't be like, oh, I would love the Gerard because I just I haven't seen anything yet, really. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely because that's why that's why that's why I'm saying Gerard because it's more of like if Klopp leaves in 2022, which may happen, which may mm. not happen, and mm. it's like you know, I'd love if Klopp stays maybe a couple more years beyond that because I think Gerard will have a lot more time than to be the manager of Liverpool. Um, but you look at it, you think Frank Lampard, one year with Derby in the Championship, he goes to Chelsea with true. a fan and does that. But, even, you know but, but, but see, but that's the thing with that. Even that, his team is doing okay now. And that is impressive because they had the band. That's, I, I give it up. That's, I got to big him up for that. That's, that's hugely impressive. Huh? But how's the season going to go? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, oh. you know, for, we got we to gotta give him credit for, for now. But, yeah, we don't know how the season is going to go. But, yeah, even, yeah. even with now. Good. Mm. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm just more giving credit to Frank Lampard because of his performances um, in terms of sort of what I'm seeing, um, the, 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 the play style, you oh, know, no the doubt. way he's doing. No it's not yes. sort of like he was getting results and scraping them. He's going away to, I think he's won every single away game this season by United. You know what I mean? Mm. But, so that, mm. that is a brilliant, brilliant achievement to go away to Burnley win 4 2. You know, Watford 2 1. Where else does he want? You, you want to wear at Norwich, want to wear at Wolves 5 2. Do you know what I mean? So, and that's what we're sort of seeing. And you think, and, but I think with, if Klopp leaves in 2022, right, you look at it, you think, what sort of team is Gerald going to be inheriting? I think the Salah Firmino Mane, they'll still be here. They'll be around 29, 30 ish, 30. And don't get me wrong, listen, 30 years old doesn't mean that players are retiring. You look at Aguero, he's 31. Abamian's 30, 31. You know, great players. If you're if you're a great player, you play until you're 33, 34 at the top level. You know, what I mean, mm. obviously there'll be a little time, but you see that with Ronaldo and players like that, they're still going at it. And of course, there'll be signings during those couple of summers where we'll get obviously next summer we're going to get some signings as well. So, and you look at the Fabinho, he'll be around 28. Robertson, he'll be like 27. Trent will be like 24. Gomez will be like what 25. Virgil. He'll be like 31 ish. But Virgil, obviously, you know how Virgil plays football. He, he doesn't sweat. So at 31, he'll be still fit and fine. Allison, 28. The Matildas, Chamberlain, he'll be like, what, 20, 20 29. Ronaldo, obviously, these players will be getting on now. Milner will be gone. Ronaldo, 32. Henderson, 32. These, these, there will be changes throughout the team during this sort of period. And I think Klopp, right, he will leave, he will leave, he will leave Gerard if he's the next manager with a much better team than, than Fergie left Moyes, than, than Conte left to Lampard. You know, then Wenger left to Emery. You know, then then Pellegrini left to Pep. He will leave them with a world class team still, and uh, with signings you know added to that. You know, what I mean that's that's why you know uh, it could be a good time for uh, Gerard to come in. You know what I mean, so but obviously yeah. still got, still got a lot more titles to him this season. Then. Yeah, and, and 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 that's the thing I'm so excited about with this team because, um, as as Klopp said, uh, alluded to after the Champions League final. It's just the beginning. So enjoy it now, celebrate it now. But there's there's going to be a few more trophies Klopp gets before he leaves. So um, I, I'm just so proud of where we are, man. And, and we got we got to just keep trucking, keep trucking. We we gotten past a difficult period. We have to keep getting these results, man, because um, it's not going to get any easier. 
I don't care what the name looks like on the on the team sheet. I don't, I don't care what team we're playing against. I've always said it. Liverpool are going to get everybody's best shot. I wouldn't be surprised if Palace all of a sudden step up and their goalkeeper has the the, the game of his career and, and all of this. You know, it's it's going to be tough. But Liverpool have it in them to to get past these these tough moments. And you know, I don't love Roy Keane, but I, I thought what he a lot of things he said on that Sky Sports panel the other day were, were, were on the money. And it, no one said it was going to be easy. So it, it should be hard. And and the, the guys should embrace that, use it, and and get these results, man. Because how big is it going to be to to see us finally get this monkey off our back? I mean, this has been incredibly long. And to, and to see them do it this year, I know we haven't done it yet, um, but it looks very promising. To see us do it this year is going to be really, really big. So I can't wait, man. Um, I'm glad that we started talking and I had to find out that I have to watch the game away from home because it's not going to be shown. Um, I'm glad I did that because I would have been really pissed off. I would have been pissed off turning the TV on like, oh, wait, now I got to try to rush to this. So, yeah, I'm glad I found that out. But, yeah, um, let's try to connect uh, at the end of the match if possible. I don't know if you're going somewhere to watch it or you're going to watch it at home or what. Yeah, I'm going to watch it in the stream. And then probably let's, let's, let's watch the City game. And then obviously because that's five Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then we can, see, we can chat after that. Sounds good, man. Thanks for making time. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, see you later, man. Thanks for having me on.